The Phoenix Outrigger is a prefabricated dynamic extension assist which is used with a custom fit low temperature thermoplastic splint. It was designed to meet the need for precise alignment of dynamic splint forces following implant resection arthroplasties of the metacarpal phalangeal joints. The unique wheel design acts as a pulley redirecting the angle of pull. Dynamic force can be achieved by rubber bands, graded elastic, or springs. This videotape describes the fabrication of a splint. Further reading is recommended. These articles describe the principles of low-profile dynamic splinting and the biological rationale for splinting following implant resection arthroplasty. The Phoenix Outrigger package includes a dorsal wire support with four adjustable wheels and a radial wire support with ring terminal. These are adaptable for right or left hands. Also included are a hex wrench and finger slings. One thumb nut is provided to be used as a rubber band post. Total weight of the Outrigger is less than two ounces. Additional splint supplies needed but not included are tube stockinette thermoplastic and strap materials. Adhesive back foam padding is used over the distal ulna. Paper, tape measure, and wax pencil are used in making the splint patterns. Also needed are dynamic components of choice, rubber bands, graded elastics, or springs. If a spring is used, a spring holder or anchor will be needed. Additional thumb nuts are needed if these are to be used to attach the outrigger to the thermoplastic. Tools and equipment needed are a heat source for simmering water and a net for lifting the thermoplastic, heat gun, scissors, and a punch or drill. Wire cutters, a hammer, and anvil are needed to adjust the radial outrigger. During the splinting procedure, the hand is supported in elevation. The incision is dressed. Tube stockinette is placed over the hand. Care is taken throughout the splinting procedure to avoid lateral stress to the digits. Additional padding is placed over the distal ulna. Adhesive back foam is stuck onto the stockinette and later transferred to the inside of the splint. The additional contour and padding will relieve splint pressure at this bony prominence. The hand is placed on a paper towel to begin the splint pattern. The pattern is drawn following points approximately two-thirds the length of the forearm, extending just distal to the MP joints. The pattern curves away from the radial styloid and the dorsum of the thumb. An extension at the web space becomes a palmer bar. The paper pattern is cut out. It is placed over the hand to be modified as needed. The area of the radial styloid is open to reduce pressure over the thumb tendons and the superficial radial nerve. The pattern is drawn on the thermoplastic with a wax pencil. The material is warmed for cutting. Care is taken to cut smooth edges. This saves time later in finishing the edges. The thermoplastic is reheated to the forming temperature. It is lifted with a net, dried thoroughly, then placed on the hand. Gravity aids the material to drape and to form to the contours of the hand. Attention can then be given to more intricate shaping. The palmer bar is rolled, then wrapped around the palm. It is lightly pressed against the ulnar border of the splint. This maintains the position of the palmer bar while care is taken to mold it to support the distal transverse arch of the hand. The palmer bar rests proximal to the flexion crease so that full flexion is possible. The proximal and distal edge are slightly flared. The outrigger is placed so that the most distal point of the transverse wire rests over the midpoint of the proximal